When a woman discovers her husband's affair, they both take dangerous measures to fulfill their desires. Leonora Holmes goes on her usual evening run, not knowing that her husband Christian is watching over her. He waits for her to pass by her regular route, and when she shows up, he runs her over with his car. After committing the crime, a single tear rolls down Christian's cheek. Eventually, Holger, the detective who handled the case, retells the couple's story to his daughter. Although Christian was never convicted, he claims it was no simple hit and run. Holger's daughter replies that perhaps it was an actual accident, but the events prior to what happened only strengthen his belief that Christian is guilty. In the days leading up to the incident, Christian's phone repeatedly received notifications at 3am, which raised suspicion and concern from Leonora. Bothered, she confronted Christian, demanding to see who texted him, but he only told her to trust him instead of prying into his affairs. Fueled by her doubts, Leonora tried to snatch the phone, but her husband reacted by impulsively hurling it across the room, shattering it. The following morning, Leonora got home from her run. She caught Christian in the kitchen with their son Johan, who's been seriously ill in the previous years. Due to his condition, she was forced to set aside her career as a musician to focus on him. Now, Christian is the only one working on a construction company that he co-founded. When Johan prepared to leave for school, Leonora apologized to Christian about last night's fight. She offered to have his his phone fixed, but he insisted on replacing it because it was old anyway. With this, Leonora reluctantly drove Johan to school. On their way, Johan asked if his friend Martha could hitch a ride. Leonora agreed and she couldn't help but smile, knowing that the two were fond of each other. Meanwhile, Christian arrived at the construction site and began searching for Xenia, one of the architects. However, before he could find her, his co-founder and best friend Peter approached him with concerning news. Peter informed Christian that the IRS would investigate their accounts, raising concerns that their past fraudulent activities might be exposed. Despite their anxiety, they found solace in the belief that the IRS investigation was merely routine and not a serious threat. Later, Christian met up with Xenia and the two kissed, revealing that she was his mistress. Xenia then asked if he had read the messages she sent which held an ultimatum that forced him to choose between her and his wife. Despite being in love with her, he was conflicted because Johan was finally getting better, and he wanted to be a good father to him. Frustrated, Xenia attempted to leave, but Christian pinned her to the wall and started teasing her intimately. She pretended to give in, but ultimately left. Meanwhile, Leonora had her car washed before heading home. Upon arriving, she decided to stalk her husband's Facebook account while being on a call with a phone company. She asked if she could still retrieve her husband's messages, but they denied her request since the account wasn't in her name. When she found a picture of Christian and Xenia, she ended the call to focus on her discovery. This led her to stalk Xenia's account, trusting her instincts that she was the other woman. That afternoon, Leonora made deliberate hints to Christian, expressing her desire for intimacy. However, he displayed minimal interest and abruptly ended their kiss when she initiated it. Later, the two went to Christian's work event, where he gave a lengthy compliment to Xenia. As the night unfolded, Leonora caught sight of the two heading upstairs. She discreetly followed them and found them copulating. To make matters worse, the other woman looked at her with a sinister smile while Christian remained oblivious. The following day, Christian and his friend Kim gathered to prepare a bonfire for the midsummer holiday. There, he asked how he approached the topic of divorce with his ex-wife. Kim replied that it wasn't easy, but the sooner he got it over with, the better. With this, Christian sat down with Leonora and expressed his desire for a divorce. He denied involvement with someone else and emphasized that they were toxic together. However, Leonora revealed that she witnessed him with Xenia in Peter's office. Despite this, she set her feelings aside and approached the situation logically. Since she gave up her career as a violinist to take care of Johan, she'd be left with nothing if her husband left. This drove her to threaten him about his scams. Later, Christian told Peter that he wanted to fix the scams that they'd been involved with. However, Peter explained that it was too late and it would be easier to keep it a secret. Despite the problems, Christian later reassured Xenia that he had brought up the topic of divorce with Leonora, which meant that they could be official now. That afternoon, Kim noticed Christian distracted as they worked on the bonfire. He shared that Leonora refused to let him go, so Kim suggested that he found moral support for his wife. Leonora didn't have a lot of friends, but Christian knew one, Cassandra. He went out of town to visit her, unaware his wife had followed him. 
As they spoke, he told her about the divorce, but Cassandra warned that it wasn't easy to get away from Leonora. She explained that Leonora's former boyfriend Mike tragically died after falling off a cliff. Rumors circulated that he intended to end their relationship with another woman fueling speculation that Leonora might have pushed him. Hearing this, Christian drove to the spot where Mike died when the deceased man's other woman, Sonia, called him. She shared that they were at a party in the woods where she snuck out with Mike. However, she sensed that someone was watching them. Mike went to investigate, but Sonia suddenly heard him scream. When she found him, he had already fallen to his death but she was sure to have seen Leonora at the site. As Christian listened to this narrative, his wife stared at him from the bushes, seemingly wanting to end him right then and there. During his story, Holger explains that the police interrogated Leonora after Sonia reported Mike's death. However, she had alibis that proved her innocence. When Christian got home that day, Leonora forced him to leave the house for good. She gave him an ultimatum, end his relationship with Xenia or face exposure of his scams to the police. In a desperate attempt to gain leverage, Christian mentioned the rumors about Mike, but she remained composed and insisted on her innocence. Leonora demanded a choice from Christian, who ultimately called Xenia but couldn't go through with leaving her. Enraged, Leonora forced him out of the house, throwing him the key to her car and asserting her claim over the expensive one he'd been driving. That night, Christian went to his office and swapped his car for one of the company's white vans. He then waited for Leonora to pass by her usual route, where he ran her over. When he realized that she was still alive after the first impact, he put the car in reverse to ensure that she was dead. After this, he returned to the office and made sure that the cleaning staff saw him. Later, he went home and sought solace in alcohol. To his horror, Leonora arrived arrived causing him to drop his glass in disbelief. Leonora had apparently taken a different route, and Christian mistook a random woman wearing a jacket similar to hers, which led to the tragic mistake. Still, he tried being calm and acted normal, pretending that he had broken off with Xenia. As he joined his wife in bed, she asked if he still wanted her. Christian said yes, so Leonora took the initiative to copulate with him. However, he preferred cuddling her to sleep instead. The next day, Christian offered to drive Johan to school, and Leonora Nora agreed, exchanging cars with him as a gesture of reconciliation. However, their peaceful moment was interrupted when Kim approached them and informed them about a woman who had been run over the previous night. Upon hearing this news, Christian quickly excused himself and left with Johan. Alarmed about the incident, Leonora visited the crime scene. There, a bystander explained that the woman was a mother of three and that the culprit just drove off without remorse. This concerned Leonora as this was her usual route. As she stayed longer to observe, she noticed Holger, who was the detective assigned to the case. Days later, the couple celebrated Johan's graduation. To Christian's worry, Holger and his partner visited them, asking questions about the woman's death. Leonora shared that her husband came home late that night, but he explained that he was working overtime at the office. With this, Holger and his partner eventually left. As Leonora escorted them out, Christian received multiple texts from Xenia, who was furious that he hadn't been talking to her. Suddenly, Leonora entered the room. Noticing that her husband had been acting a little off since the interrogation, Christian explained that he lied to the officers because the incident occurred at the same time he went to Xenia to end things. He didn't want her to be questioned which made him anxious. However, Leonora pointed out that he told her that he had broken off with Xenia over the phone. Before he could explain, Johan's friend suddenly sang in celebration, distracting them. The following day, Christian visited the spot where he killed the woman. He was devastated to see that her loved ones had set up a memorial by the roadside, realizing the impact of his actions on her family, particularly her children. Unable to bear the guilt, Christian went to the station to turn himself in. However, the officer present was occupied, allowing him to reflect on his choices. As he waited, he heard from the news that the culprit's car seemed to have a Romanian plate number. Amidst this, Christian received a message from Johan, which caused him to reconsider his decision and ultimately leave. Meanwhile, Leonora had planned to get her car washed, but she found that she no longer had enough credits on her membership card. She complained to the clerk, but he explained that she had already used them on Wednesday night, the same night the woman was run over. The truth suddenly dawned on Leonora. Later, when Christian returned home, Leonora confronted him with security footage of him getting the white van washed using her card. The woman was deeply disturbed as she confirmed that he had initially planned to kill her. Just then, Johan walked in and realized that something was going on. 
He suspected that they were getting a divorce, but Christian told him to leave as he had to settle things with his mother. When they finally got to be alone, Leonora warned Christian to stay away from her. However, he paid no heed to her warning, prompting her to call the police. Before she could explain the whole narrative, Christian snatched the phone and manipulated the story. While he talked to them, Leonora ran to her car, so her husband went after her. She then locked herself inside while Christian knocked on her window, pleading to let him explain. She only screamed at him to return her phone, and the moment he did, she drove off. It didn't take long for Holger and his partner to come to their house. Aware that everything was about to go down, Christian reminded Johan that he loved him. After this, he asked him to stay in his room while he talked to the officers. Upon opening the door for them, Christian insisted that they talk outside. With this, the officers interrogate him about the phone call, where he claimed to have seen the Romanian plate number of the culprit. As he went on to answer their questions, Holger became increasingly convinced of his Guilt, yet he needed concrete evidence. Amidst this conversation, Christian received a message from Leonora asking him to meet her for dinner. When they finally meet, Leonora revealed how she weighed the consequences of his actions and decided that she wouldn't report him because she cared for Johan. However, her life would always be at risk around Christian, so they had to eliminate the problem, which was Xenia. As long as the other woman was alive, the wife was sure that her husband would attempt to kill her again. With that in mind, she demands that he kill his lover or she'd report him to the police. She insisted that all he needed was an alibi, just as she had when she murdered Mike. Leonora explained in detail how she had set up the record player to continuously play music while she was away. After she committed the act, she returned to her music class and pretended to be present throughout, ensuring that the teacher could provide her with a solid alibi. The following day, the couple booked a hotel room and went to a spa. This was the alibi by Leonora planned for Christian while he killed Xenia. When it was finally time, the man purposely left his phone in their room and snuck out of the balcony. However, upon seeing him, Xenia refused to entertain him because he ghosted her. Christian then forced his way inside, but this alarmed her neighbor. Before the neighbor could intervene, Christian manipulated Xenia into believing that he loved her, leading her to reassure her neighbor that everything was fine. At the hotel, Leonora called room service to bring them dinner, making it look like she was there with her husband. Having everything scheduled on time, she sent a message to Xenia using Christian's phone, where she made it look like he had broken up with her. Before Xenia could read it, Christian distracted her by getting intimate. Meanwhile, as the hotel staff arrived with their dinner, Leonora discreetly went to the bathroom and played a recording of Christian's voice. This made the staff believe that Christian was present in the room. Unbeknownst to her, Christian wasn't getting any of their plans done. Instead of killing Xenia, he made love with her. As the night progressed, Xenia went to the bathroom and noticed that the window was open. To her surprise, she saw Leonora's reflection in the mirror. Before she could react, the woman stabbed her, leading to her death. Christian soon discovered the scene, and as he embraced Xenia's lifeless body, his wife's gaze held nothing but disgust toward him. Days later, Holger investigated Xenia's house after her neighbors notified the police that she'd gone missing. There were no DNA traces found, and her gadgets were gone. However, they did gain a warrant to check her messages, where they saw Christian's last message. They paid the couple a visit, where Leonora did most of the talking. She claimed that she and her husband had taken different lovers throughout their rocky marriage, but they were trying to fix it. Christian also played clueless about Xenia's disappearance, and Leonora backed this up with an alibi, knowing something was amiss, Holger later sent a team of hounds around the area to look for a dead body. Meanwhile, the homes finally go through their midsummer tradition of burning the bonfire. With time running out, Leonora urged Christian to ignite the bonfire. Accompanied by Kim, he hurriedly paddled to the designated area. However, panic struck him when the police dogs began barking at him from the shoreline. Christian struggled to light the matches with only two left. Finally, he succeeded, bringing relief to the couple. Nonetheless, Holger sense that something was amiss. Later, Christian borrowed a guest's binoculars to observe the bonfire. However, he quickly averted his gaze upon seeing Xenia's face consumed by the flames. Soon afterward, the couple sold their house and moved elsewhere. They took Xenia's bones with them, tossing them to a lake where they could never be found. As Holger concludes the story, he reveals that Christian was never convicted due to insufficient evidence. He 
emphasizes the dangers of love and contemplates how this realization might be helpful to his daughter, who's about to get married that day. However, despite the unpredictability of marriage, she still wants to go through with it. As Holger walks his daughter down the aisle, Xenia's bones lie on the bottom of a lake, denied of the justice that she deserves. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.